Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We apologize we're not able to connect with Desmond Majakodumi, but of course, before the show wraps up, we'll definitely connect with him and have our conversation. For now, we're going to be looking at renewable energy, and joining us to discuss this is Chinedu Onyeze. Thank you so much for joining us. Good evening, Chinedu. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, we're starting to see that around the world, many people are speaking a lot more about renewable energy. But how is Nigeria faring in comparison to the world, you know, when we talk about the use of renewable energy? Thank you uh, for, for that uh, question. I think Nigeria, uh, in Nigeria, we are trying to catch up with uh, the rest of the world. Uh, it's, it amazes me that uh, Nigeria started looking into renewable energy in 2003. Uh, when the Energy Commission of Nigeria uh, came up with uh, a national policy, a national uh, energy policy that uh, m tries to encourage privatization of uh, uh, renewable energy and also uh, create platform for uh, foreign investors in the sector to come and play uh, uh, actively uh, in the Nigerian uh, renewable energy uh, industry. So, uh, but then, in the, last, uh, in the last five years, uh, there have been a lot of interest in renewable energy with technology, uh, the costs, the unit costs of producing the photo, uh, the PV cells have really uh, reduced. So uh, people are now being uh, interested. People are showing interest. Uh, it's, it's, it's becoming good business for, for, for businesses uh, in, in Nigeria. Okay. okay, so let's, let's assume that we have somebody who hasn't heard about renewable energy before or has, but is, you know, get to easily or quite well equate him or herself to it. What are the benefits of renewable energy actually to Nigeria or Nigerians if we were to actually invest massively in it? Yeah, so for the investor, uh, because uh, Nigeria is... Uh, in Africa, where you have the highest intensity of sunlight, uh, renewable energy, which uh, so, uh, solar energy falls uh, in the category, uh, presents an opportunity for uh, anybody uh, putting uh, his money uh, in the sector because you know uh, the the upfront expense, the upfront cost for starting the business is not uh, high. But then, uh, because of the energy demand that is yet to be met in Nigeria, uh, it presents a good uh, business opportunity for investors, both foreign investors and uh, local uh, investors. So what are the various sources of renewable energy that Nigerians, you know, because we are in Nigeria, the Nigerians can look into, or Nigeria as a country can look into. So far, we find that the most popular, the most talked about one is solar energy because of the solar, Correct. yes, solar panels. People are installing solar panels in their house. I'm hearing um, solar powered inverters, solar powered in ACs. What are the other types of renewable energy that Nigeria as a country can invest in? Well, bio, uh, the bio, the ethanol uh, uh, source of energy is re re renewable. Um, but then, uh, some aspect of this that I would like to take us to is the barriers to investors getting into the uh, space. Uh, we need uh, the government to subsidize investment in this uh, sector. Uh, access to capital is another challenge uh, investors are having. The cost of capital, the cost of getting loans from banks to invest uh, is still on the high side. If the government can come in, subsidize that, and in fact, uh, incentivize it by maybe giving tax reliefs or tax holidays for uh, investors that decide to go into that space. We will see that replace uh, uh, fuel or uh, fossil energy that we currently use uh, mostly in our country. What of hydro? Mm -hmm. Yeah, hydro is an interesting area too. Uh, in fact, uh, because it is, uh, because the technology is matured, uh, okay. it's, uh, the barrier to entry is very low. Uh, however, you know, uh, because of the geolocation of, of hydro uh, source of energy, you know, uh, it might not be sufficient to meet our energy demand. Uh, interestingly, Nigeria is blessed as a country uh, because uh, in the space of uh, 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 renewable energy sources, Nigeria has abundant, uh, abundant, uh, Nigeria has abundant uh, supply of these energy sources. So uh, we only need the country, we only need the, we only need the government to start incentivizing it, start creating the public awareness for investors to see the opportunity 
uh, in going into uh, the renewable energy business. Okay, so I'm happy you talked about the resources Nigeria has to actually go into the renewable energy industry. And I know that you're from Abia State. Correct. Now, starting from your state, I know Abia has some things that are on its soil that can be very valuable to Nigeria. Now, aside Abia State, are there other states that have other elements that we actually need to tap into and actually, you know, improve on yeah. to build up our renewable energy market or industry in Nigeria? Yeah. So, an interesting uh, energy source is gas, which uh, Abia State has a lot of it. Uh, in fact, you know, quite east or quite west area of Abia State, uh, we currently flare a lot of gas. Uh, and I give kudos to the government, the current uh, uh, government of uh, uh, President uh, Muhammad Buhari. So there is a there's a program that is running uh, currently. We call uh, they call gas flare gas commercialization program. So what that uh, is is that you know interested investors are allowed to you know take up uh, the gas flare points uh, and monetize the gas that comes from those flare uh, 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 flare points. So. Uh, since 1960, we've been flaring gas, uh, as, you, as you all know. So uh, for the fact that the government has been able to step into that space and, you know, uh, come up with a program that encourages investors, private players, to start uh, thinking of how they can monetize the gas we've been flaring for a long time and provide energy to uh, Nigerians in their homes. I think that's a laudable initiative. So are there any other states that are doing this, actually? If, even if it's not gas flaring, actually? Well, it's a national program, and it will cut across all the Niger Delta states with um, uh, what I, I, I learned about it. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a path in the right direction. Uh, we've been flaring over 1.8 trillion cubic feet of gas uh, yes. since we found oil. So uh, for the fact that uh, Kachuku has taken this up, uh, I think uh, Nigerians should key in, uh, most of the investors, and also for uh, investors that are looking to uh, come into the industry. Okay. Okay, um, let's talk about the possibility of Nigeria banking totally on renewable energy. We know that there are certain countries in the world who have realized the dangers of, you know, using a lot of all this greenhouse, the greenhouse gases that have been emitted into the atmosphere. We see that there are certain countries who are getting rid of the cars that they have because they want, you know, energy-friendly cars. How soon do you think it will take for us as Nigeria to get there? How soon will Nigeria as a country get to that point where renewable sources of energy will be our main source? Is it even possible? Well, I think it's possible. Uh, there's a lot to do uh, from the part of the government and also our citizens. Uh, there needs to be awareness. That's, we need to create the awareness that renewable energy is a sustainable uh, source of energy that can replace uh, fossil energy. Uh, fossil energy is considered as dirty energy because of the CO2 and other components that uh, get flared into the air. Mm. Uh, it affects our ozone layer, and sometimes uh, it, it means uh, uh, acid rain uh, coming, uh, coming down. Uh, you know. So um, renewable energy, I believe, uh, with what technology is doing now, is reducing the entry barrier for investors. Uh, it's making it cheaper for us. So at some point, it will become more competitive to, uh, to uh, uh, go for the renewable energy than the one, the conventional energy that we are used to. So I see in the next 10, uh, 20 years, uh, Nigeria, you know, joining the League of Nations that are keen into renewable 10, energy. 10, 20 years, you know, that, that, that I'm That's sure a long time. No, no, it's actually by the corner. You were saying it's a long time. 2000 <laughs> was, was just 19 years ago. I remember 2000 very clearly. So yeah. 10, 10, 10, 20 years. I'm hoping that we actually will get to that point where renewable sources of energy, renewable energy becomes our main source mm. of energy. But one of the main reasons people complain about not investing in renewable energy for now is they think, you know, there's this perception that solar energy is very expensive. For you to be able to get a solar panel, you pay through your nose. So people would rather buy fuel and power their, I better pass my neighbor generators. Mm -hmm. But we're starting to see lots of advocacy being made for why people should use renewable energy instead. What would you say with regards to the costs? Well, my take is this. Um, <clears throat> today is expensive, but with time, it's going to be uh, cheap. Again, with technology, uh, we'll be able to reduce the, uh, lower the unit cost of producing those panels. Uh, however, there's an aspect to this that I want to bring uh, to the uh, discussion, which is, you know, Nigeria being able to leverage other energy sources that we are, we've not yet uh, be able to harness uh, uh, completely. Uh, the liquid fuel, which you know we have in abundance, 
Uh, Nigeria is the second largest country uh, in, in, the, in Africa that has uh, crude oil. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, we have over 38 billion barrels of crude oil in reserve, yet we import uh, fuel, you see. So uh, we need to even start uh, using the natural resource uh, 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 crude oil that God that has blessed have. us with. Yeah, before we start uh, thinking of uh, mm -hmm. renewable energy uh, and, uh, and the complexities that, that, that come with that. So um, first of all, I would say uh, the government should uh, incentivize, incentivize local refining of crude oil. Uh, the government should also encourage uh, uh, private investment in coal. We have a lot of coal in, in, in Enugu, Enugu yes. and some other uh, states in the country. So let's even exhaust these other conventional sources of energy before uh, we, we start looking at uh, renewable energy. So that uh, by the time it gets too cheap uh, in, uh, in, in developed countries, Nigeria can now uh, uh, key into it. Okay, so I'm going to ask, still on renewable energy, what's the, um, where is the place of recycling in all of this? Because I know these days we're talking about recycling of different things, um, plastic and, you know, even metal, steel, breakable bottles and all of that. A lot of people are saying, this is actually going to help in also um, building economy. Can we say that recycling has a place in this? Well, for renewable energy, uh, I don't see a place for recycling. Okay. Uh, however, you know, I think the, the idea is, you know, uh, uh, green energy, using green energy. Mm. Uh, instead of uh, polluting the environment, mm -hmm. if you have an alternative source of energy that can allow you uh, get value and you don't have to pollute the environment, uh, it is better to go that route. Okay. Um, so uh, again, in Nigeria, we have a lot of crude oil that we've not even refined enough to use. Uh, we have uh, a lot of gas that we currently flare. I mean, these are resources that are at our backyard, you know. So uh, let's even start from those ones. Make sure that every home in Nigeria is lit up and that every factory in Nigeria is powered. Uh, when these things happen, we will experience what we call an industrial, industrialized market economy. Uh, you will now start seeing the link between having, uh, 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 having uh, steady and reliable, affordable power to, with uh, economy boom. You know? So uh, that should be the path the country should be going. Um, I'm also impressed with uh, uh, President uh, Buhari's uh, uh, manifesto where he highlighted uh, power investment in power investment infrastructure mm -hmm. you know those two uh, um, parts of those two sectors will definitely take us as a country from an agrarian uh, based economy to you know uh, an industrialized economy so right. power has a role to play we have what it takes to get it working and uh, you know I want to use this opportunity to challenge our government to start looking at you know, how do we refine locally? How do we subsidize? Instead of making budgets for importation of refined products mm. from, from Asia or Europe, let's use that budget to subsidize, to subsidize local uh, uh, refining of crude oil. We've been talking about this for the longest time. The question is, mm. will it even ever happen? And if yes, how soon will it happen? But I, I'm glad that you mentioned that we should focus on lighting up every home in Nigeria. It's unfortunate that in 2019, not everywhere in Nigeria is lit up. There are people who have never seen light in Nigeria. And there are communities that, you know, people go and teach them how to make their own solar light because there's no light in the communities. True. In 2018, you ran for... you wanted to run for the senatorial seat and you would have allegedly been the youngest person to run for a senatorial seat under the APC. And your, your campaign promise was that if you had gotten through the primaries that you were going to change the Nigerian energy sector. How, what was the primary mode in which you hoped to change the energy sector if you had gotten this yeah. opportunity? Thanks for, the, for that question. So my background is petroleum engineering. I read uh, in Futo. And, uh, you know, I've had over 16 years experience in the oil and gas industry. Um, one of the things that made me dive uh, into the industry uh, further was an experience I had in 2012. If you remember, in January 12th, around that time, 
2012, the economy was shut down because sure. of uh, fuel scarcity. Uh, there was, uh, you know, demonstration uh, across the country, you know, and I remember being in the queue for a long time. So uh, in my vehicle, I was thinking, I said, petroleum engineer, I know that Nigeria has a lot of crude oil, and I, I see a lot of Nigerians queued up suffering to get fuel, which is a byproduct of the crude oil that is in our backyard. So I started thinking about how do we uh, challenge the, uh, the status quo. And uh, it was at that point I started uh, researching about how things that we can do, policy recommendations, changes that we can do in what we currently have to make sure that Nigeria is liquid fuel independent. So uh, I went to school, uh, I left my job, my, my job and my young family uh, in Lagos. I went to MIT to focus on that and I studied the Nigerian oil and gas uh, industry. My, my research work was, was, was to reposition the Nigerian industry so that we become a net exporter of fuel than uh, being uh, an importer. Uh, and when I was in school, uh, I had opportunity to meet with some of the uh, leaders in this country that came over to give leadership talks. And I told them the, you know, what I was working on and results that I've already had. You know, some of them invited me over uh, back to Nigeria to see how uh, some of those recommendations could be considered. You know, so uh, I came up with actionable recommendations that has the potential to reposition the Nigerian petroleum industry such that we become a net, export, a net exporter of fuel and a global hub for petroleum-related businesses in the world. All right, so you, you, we, we would like to, you know, find out what is, these action plans are, but unfortunately, we've quite run out of time. We look forward to having you again, and probably then you can break down these action plans for us. But we hope that you will not be deterred by the fact that you did not get through the primaries in 2018. Yeah. We're seeing so lots of young I, I people. To, so I wanted to connect to why I ran. So when okay. I couldn't get the government to start doing some of those things, I decided to run for Senate so that I could get the opportunity to present these recommendations to the House and see whether... Some mm -hmm. of our laws and uh, and, and uh, some of our laws and policies. But would, would you still run for office? Well, I'm still committed to. I feel Brilliant. young people uh, needs to start participating in our politics. Uh, I stay. I believe it's our future. Indeed, you know, it so is. So we can't leave it for the older generation of. Uh, Politician. And as you keep participating, we wish you all the best. We hope that, you know, you, you do not get discouraged. Nigeria Thank is you. ours to build. We need more young people that are passionate about the country and passionate about actually impacting a change. We've been speaking with engineer Chine Dohe, so thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you so much. To enjoy more of this, our Ugunke videos, when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.